Well, let's speak now to Trey Yinkst. Bring into our conversation right now, Trey Yinkst. Journalist Trey Yinkst joined me earlier today. Tanya, Trey Yinkst. Uh, Trey Yinkst. 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 Uh, the name is Trey Yinks. Trey Yinks. Well, we can speak now to Trey Yinks, who is uh, co-founder and journalist for the American news website uh, News 2 Share, and he joins us via webcam from Ferguson. Yeah, there's been shots fired just one block from where we are. Uh, there's a number of helicopters flying overhead looking for suspects that have been shooting. You must disperse immediately. You are in violation of the state and laws of I'm going out now again in Baltimore. Joining us via Skype, Trey Yinkst. He is a journalist for News 2. Baltimore, Maryland, where protesters have taken to the streets. They want answers surrounding the death of Frank Ray. I mean, it's right. No justice, no peace. I mean, it's self explanatory. chaotic end last night to what had been largely peaceful. Broke shop windows and fought with police. At one point, the more than 30,000 fans at a Baltimore Orioles game were told not to leave the stadium. <laughs> Trey Yinks, he is now off to Jerusalem to cover the crisis there. Now you're a young man, you told me, 20 years of age, yeah. in the middle of a war zone. Run, run. A second rocket just hit the building right next to our hotel. Uh, this is the first time which uh, Israel sent uh, a very clear message. Today, violence continues to escalate in Gaza, where attempts to render a ceasefire were unsuccessful. Now, local hospitals here are having trouble keeping up with all the injured patients. Uh, they're overwhelmed, overpopulated, and they're lacking the necessary medical supplies to keep people healthy and alive. We cannot deny things when we see them up close through the first person because it's a new perspective. It's a perspective that causes us to feel emotion. It's a perspective that causes us to connect. It's a perspective that causes us to feel human suffering. And we don't shoot at shooting range. We shoot at real targets, bodies. After the Ku Klux Klan threatened to use lethal force on protesters in Ferguson, Missouri, some residents want the Klan to know they are prepared to fight. I'm here in Independence Square where just three months ago, Ukrainian citizens took to the streets to protest then-President Viktor Yanukovych. Citizens made shields and weapons out of anything that they could find as the world watched while this normally pleasant square turned into a violent war zone. You can still smell the smoke in the air. You can still see the burnt buildings. And you can still hear the voices of people desperate for a better Ukraine. The United States cut all funding to Ugandan government institutions following a law that was signed earlier this year here in Kampala stating that some homosexual acts may be punishable by life in prison. Die, because if you, after all, if you obey, disobey God, you should die. Although widespread violence has not yet broken out, the fear of a genocide against homosexuals remains. Today, President Barack Obama recognized the U.S. Olympians for their hard work and numerous victories at the Sochi Olympics. President Obama was hosting the men's and women's teams from the University of Connecticut basketball. When this happened, Stephanie Dolson lost her balance and fell off the riser as president. It's an emotional day here in front of the Supreme Court after a 5-4 to four decision ruling that states can no longer ban same-sex marriage. I'm here just two kilometers from the Israel-Gaza border as fighting continues between Hamas and Israeli forces. It's not going to have the time in this lame duck session to uh, give it life and, and make sure it's successful immigration reform. 
Well, uh, I, you do raise a good point. Would you consider the U.S. as being a little bit naive right now to think that these sanctions are going to de-escalate the violence that's starting in the region? Uh, not at all. First of all, we've seen firsthand how sanctions can have an impact in changing countries' behavior. If you like your health care, you can keep your health care, period. Right. If, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be panning out exactly as he originally thought. So, uh, you know, I wrote that line many times, said that line many times in the campaign. Today, tensions remain high in the city of Donetsk, where yesterday the Ukrainian military launched an aerosol. How do you think more markets could be brought to West Baltimore to provide those things that people need? People diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer have one to three years to live. And as of today, there's no cure. That's Trey Yates! I was standing on the sidewalk just trying to catch what was going on on a public sidewalk. Are you a journalist? I want you all to know I reached out to Trey. He just wrote back to me. He says for this time he cannot do an interview for legal reasons, he says. Uh, but he did write on Twitter, he, was, he says he was just exercising his First Amendment rights trying to cover the story. Uh, this is actually uh, what he wrote last night, uh, saying that uh, he was just exercising his First Amendment rights on a public sidewalk. It's our job to hold uh, law enforcement and, and civilians accountable for their actions. So if they're falsifying information in my police report, when they know that I'm going to do everything that I can to, to make sure everyone knows what the true story was, um, I can't imagine what they're doing to people who aren't journalists, who aren't members of the media, um, who can't really speak up and, and have a voice.